We're running the cover three here at Pro Football Weekly, where we bring you three under the radar stories from the wild card round of the playoffs. And the Seattle Seahawks seem like one of the hottest teams in the league right now as they go into the divisional round matchup with the Atlanta Falcons. But have you noticed the cause for concern in each of their past two wins? Slow starts in each of these games. Think back to that three game stretch starting in week 14. Seattle blew out the Bills, the Cardinals, and 49ers. Then we came to week 17 and Seattle was trailing the Rams 7-3 at halftime. They came back to win that game, but then again in the wildcard round, they were trailing 14-0 at the end of the first quarter against a Redskins team that was running around with a gimpy Robert Griffin III at quarterback. Now, the Seattle's going into this matchup with the Falcons, a team that's the number one seed in the NFC, that's eager to finally get that first playoff win and is coming off a bye, so it should be well rested and playing with plenty of energy. The Falcons, they're 42-12 when they score first under head coach Mike Smith. They're 44-3 when they lead at halftime. So if you tell me that the Seattle Seahawks cannot keep winning the way they've been playing the past couple weeks, I tend to agree with you. It's very difficult to find any weaknesses in this Denver Broncos team, which is part of the reason they got the number one seed in the AFC. We all know what Peyton Manning can do and the defense has been outstanding all year long. But one thing the Baltimore Ravens might try to take advantage of next weekend is Dennis Pitta, their tight end. The Broncos have struggled covering tight ends all season long. They actually lead the league in most touchdowns allowed to that position, giving up 11 touchdowns to tight ends on the year. Pitta had 125 yards receiving and two touchdowns when the Broncos played the Ravens in Week 15. And even if Denver can get past Baltimore, contain Pitta, and get that win to go to the AFC title game, they probably have to face two guys named Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez. So while the Broncos are looking pretty good, sitting pretty, they have to figure out a way to corral those opposing tight ends, because you know those opposing teams are going to go after them. The way the Texans were absolutely humiliated by the Patriots in Week 14, you can't really look at one area and say, hey, if the Texans fix this, they'll fare better in the divisional round rematch next Sunday. But I will point to one area where I'm confident the Texans will show improvement, and that's with their defensive backs matching up against Tom Brady. In the first matchup, it was really no match as Brady threw four touchdowns and exploited opportunities all over the field with Jonathan Joseph not nearly at 100% struggling, nickel corner Brandon Harris in his first extended action showing his inexperience, and just massive breakdowns in coverage all over the field. I'll tell you what, watching the Texans last week against the Bengals, I feel a lot more confident that the DBs are going to have a stronger showing this time around. Jonathan Joseph is playing as well as he has all season long. Brandon Harris is still making too many mistakes, but you can see the confidence building. And I just can't imagine a scenario where the Texans are so unprepared they leave Aaron Hernandez uncovered in the red zone. They still have many issues to correct. One offensive touchdown each of the past four weeks won't get it done against the mighty Patriots. But I can say with confidence after watching last week that if nothing else, the Houston DBs will be a lot more ready for battle this time around. For all the latest news and analysis, be sure to check us out at ProFootballWeekly.com.